so it is often said retracing one's steps can be the best strategy when you are lost. So my advocacy this week is a return to June 12th. So last week on this show, I spoke on the need for all of us to become politicians, despite the seeming challenges. This week, I continue in the same spirit, an examination of our electoral process, and advocate for the adoption of an electoral system based on some of our valuable social cultural experiences, like we did with option A4 during the um, June 12, 1993 elections. I know we're not in the month of June, but my advocacy will reference the June 12, 1993 elections as an important marker for democracy in Nigeria. Not essentially about the tragic outcome of that elections, but rather on the process which led to the design of the election itself and how that process has come to be considered to be the freest and fairest election ever in the checkered history of Nigerian political process. When Professor Humphrey Wosu, the head of the Federal Elections Agency then, decided to, to choose option A4, as he called it then, many people raised an eyebrow at the process, which he later explained as being based on the old African system of choosing leaders for specific tasks. Oh yeah, so my advocacy is on the need for us to perhaps re-examine once again the electoral processes in Nigeria, especially given our recent troubled past when it comes to election, and not just in Nigeria, but indeed across the continent where the process to elect leaders have often led to bloodshed. So June 12, 1993 was a watershed moment for us in Nigeria. It proved that very often the simple things that are organic can be the solution to seemingly complex situations. Since 1999 and the return of democracy in our country, elections have become a do or die affair. The processes are often convoluted with voter registrations that begin and end haphazardly instead of continuing, card readers, voter cards, and uh, reading machines that are not that smart or transparent, even the transparent ballot boxes that contain fudged ballots, manual counting by professors that are numerically challenged, electronic vote submissions without electronic servers, election observers and soldiers at polling booths who sometimes only ensure that uh, the chosen ones get to vote. So we have come full cycle. But like most things in Nigeria, Nigeria at the moment, we still receive to accept and acknowledge that we have a broken system from the basic foundational structure of our nation and to how we elect our so-called leaders. We must begin the process to redesign Nigeria brick by brick, ideas versus ideas, asking the often difficult question and choosing solutions which are organic and a reflection of who we are and how we are. Which is why the idea of Professor Humphrey Wonsu's option A4 for, appeals to me, which basically says, stand by your man. In my village, for example, no man in Enugu state, whenever there's a need to elect leaders to do a certain thing or to become a chief or whatever, the system is clear. You know, the front runners are called to stand in front and villagers and people who support whoever are asked to stand by their totems and the people they, they, they want to. And that's it, the people are counted. And that's the job done. The vote is counted in the presence of everyone and the winner is known immediately. I dare say the system is not exclusive to Nigeria or to my village only. In any case, we did this successfully on June 12, 1993 and was adjudged, as I said, the freest and fairest. But again, like most things, we kill the man and the vision of free and fair, perhaps because it will expose our banal stupidity or greed. For me, it's time to go back to our recent history and exhume the skeletons of this our past. Perhaps we can find a spirit to rebuild our own electoral system. Yes, um, uh, I, I quite agree with you. Um, even though we mooted that idea um, in the last election um, with um, the electoral amendment, um, those that benefited from a seemingly transparent process kicked against it. Uh, that no... Um, the um, realities of June 12th have changed, and so it can no longer be the same way, uh, you know, all of those things. The same people that agitated for um, amendment to the Electoral Act, that the president should not be allowed to single-handedly nominate the INEC chair, you know, benefited from all of those campaigns, got into office, and they kicked against everything they campaigned for. And, and so we are where we are, and, and really, and then, the same people that will kick against it in the general election, you see them use it in their primaries. 
if you watch uh, those state um, APC primaries, you know, they said we were going to ensure that it was transparent and open. And, and so what did they do? It was basically, you know, the um, amended option A4. You queue behind your man. And, and then at the end of the day, they give you a ballot. You go and then you cast. But so you count the people on the queue of the candidate. And also, in most cases, it tallies with the, the, the counting, the voting. But here, they tell you the parties are many now. And so you would have, you can't have 100 lines, 100 queues, you, you know. But you forget that even if you have 100 candidates, that many of them actually score votes, you know, in the real election. And because they don't want the election to be transparent. So which brings me back to the people. I have advocated that we should stop going to churches and mosques. On Friday, instead of going to mosques, let us just use that time to do a quiet protest just at the center of town to say we've gathered here today government these are the basic questions we need answers to on sunday all of us instead of going to canaan land fire on the mountain and uh, uh, the other one or catholic church we'll gather also and say after all we're going to churches online so but we'll gather and say government these are the basic answers uh, questions we need answer to by the time they see such you know upright building momentum i tell you Gradually, you know, we'll be able to unite to ask those common questions. Libras. Until we do that, thank you. We we'll keep suggesting. Thank you, Libra. It's precisely what I think we should do, which is why I made reference to the fact that how do we gather so many Nigerians to watch, you know, this soft porn on, on, on cable TV? And we cannot muster, you know, the same sort of numbers of people to say, hey, leaders, this is what we want, this is what you need to do for us. Why do we engage in frivolities and the, we, we major in minor and then we leave the major things about governance and about our lives, our existence, our well-being to chance, but then we can muster ourselves to watch a TV program. If we have that kind of numbers, then we can make governance, we can challenge our leaders to give us better governance. I agree with you, Liberals. I agree with you. The numbers of people, Nigerians going to church and to mosque, if we muster that sort of numbers to ask our legislators, our, the judiciary and all these arms of government, will go somewhere. I mean, yeah. yeah, go on. Let me just mention, um, in, in support of uh, Emeka's point, um, I remember, I, I'm not sure if it was just before the last election or just after, when the Electoral Amendment Act was being debated in the public space and in the National Assembly, a kite that was being flown was that the so-called option A4 no longer suits Nigeria's reality because, you know, as he said, there are too many parties or the population is different now or that um, we should be looking more towards this chimera called electronic voting. voting. And I just want to point out that the idea that Nigeria is this, has become this like super advanced society that can move toward electronic voting when we haven't yet figured out how to count A4 papers inside a, a, a ballot A4 box. Because A4 is so transparent. It's ridiculous. You, you can't fake mm, it. We need, to, it we need to be realistic. We have electronic voting without a server. <laughs> we need to be realistic about who and where we are. How we need to understand joke? that we are, we are a poor country, first of all. We are an, uh, a technologically disadvantaged country. So all these kites we keep flying, oh, card reader and uh, permanent voters, smart card and all these things. And then on the election day, the card doesn't work. The reader doesn't the card read it. Smart, Meanwhile, you, you can just stand well, I have to say, behind actually, this your point, man no, as you talk it, It's a revelation for me because I've always been an advocate of electronic voting. No Not way. least because, and, and listening to you, maybe I'm, I'm still rethinking it because I, even when I considered what you were saying, I said, okay, is it that people will not go and intimidate people from coming out in the first place to stand, let alone count? Stand and is it that somebody, man. when you stand Stand's and you count, you. someone can't still, where there's a will, there's always a way. Someone can still manipulate the figures. Is it that those things are foolproof? I know, I know not, what you're saying. Not but I'm it's telling much you, easier I'm telling you that to it's manipulate easier. an electronic No, I get you. I, I, that's why I had wanted electronic voting. But clearly, all you people, are, I'm outnumbered in terms of people who don't believe <laughs> who can get to that promised land. That would have been my own preferable. Even America. Because, with because so the Big Brother she referenced, you work. know, they're voting from their homes. So yeah, and they vote, there are multiple votes and all sorts of things. Thank That's you. Nice. It's, it's a different it's I'm a just different thinking, well, maybe, maybe, oh, what I'm happy, what I'm, let me just say, what I'm mm. happy about is that at least let someone even think 
towards finding a way that, because for me, the ballot box is the only way we're going to get that change of governance, get the right people in who are representative of our desires so that we can finally get this. And one of the ways to make it open. Yeah. Exactly. When you make it open, stand, so, yeah, people would int intimidate, some people would be intimidated, but it is much more transparent. And then also, this idea of vote buying also will be there, but it will be reduced because I can no longer collect money here and collect there. So because yeah. at the end of the day, I will have to stand somewhere behind someone. that people so, will see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, well, um, if you thought that uh, I took you back in time, wait till David, our resident historian, is done with his advocacy after the break.